There was an incident in a secret laboratory. One of the scientists released a substance that turned people into vampires. Detective Reed arrived at the scene to interview three witnesses. The first scientist, Michael, said, I stopped by the lab this morning to pick up some notes. The machines were working just fine, and I didn't see anyone. I took the papers and left. The second scientist, Lindsay, said, I closed the lab at night. One of the PCs was faulty, but I was very tired and decided to leave it till the morning. Unfortunately, I overslept. And the third scientist, Jennifer, said, I got up early and went to the lab to check the devices. No one seems to have entered the room. I fixed one of the computers and left. Which one of them was lying? Michael is lying. One of the computers was actually faulty, and Jennifer spent the whole morning fixing it. If Michael had walked into the lab, he would have known about it, or Jennifer would have noticed him. So he must have entered the lab after the others had already left. But why would someone release such a dangerous substance? Michael didn't want to confess, so Detective Reed decided to investigate the crime scene to find out who was behind this. Take a look at this picture. Is there anything suspicious? It looks like Michael dropped an ID card. And look, it doesn't belong to him. The name on the card is George Wilson. Let's ask him about the incident. Detective Reed went to Mr. Wilson's office to ask him about the incident. Oh yeah, I gave my pass to Michael, Mr. Wilson said. But that's only because I had left something in the lab. My glasses. I didn't have time, so I asked Michael to pick them up. Well, that's not a very clever excuse, but how can you prove the man is lying? There's an open glasses case on the table, and the glasses are inside. But Mr. Wilson, didn't you say that you left them in the lab? Oh, did I say my glasses? Sorry, I meant my papers. I made this mistake because I asked my secretary Shirley to look for my glasses yesterday. Find something to prove Mr. Wilson is lying. There's a calendar on Shirley's desk. Yesterday was her day off. It's marked red. Mr. Wilson is lying. Mr. Wilson was arrested, but people have already begun to turn into vampires. Can you guess who's actually a vampire? The woman on the right. She's putting on her makeup, but do you see? She isn't reflected in the mirror. Meanwhile, those who haven't turned into vampires gather everything they might need to survive. Which of these people is more likely to stay alive? All these supplies won't protect the guy on the right from vampires. As for the girl on the left, she's stocked up on what she can to defeat the vampires. She has a higher chance of survival. Let's check out the subway. There are two women here. Which of them is not pregnant? The girl on the left is not pregnant. Look, her belly is of a very strange shape. That's because she has hidden her survival supplies under her clothes. Vampires decided to throw a party. Who among those present is actually an undercover human? The guy on the left is a human. He's wearing makeup and false teeth. Nikki is also trying to survive. She packs her things and decided to move to a neighboring town. But suddenly, a vampire charged at her car. He damages the vehicle and takes away some supplies. Fortunately, he doesn't manage to bite Nikki. She escapes. Nikki has to stay home. The next day, a young man knocks on her door and asks for help. Is it okay to let him in? Nope. He has the same scar on his cheek like the vampire from the day before. Nikki continues to hide at home. 
One day, some girl starts knocking on her back door. Please help! A pack of vampires is chasing me! Nikki opens the door. The girl is out of breath. But she manages to say, They're almost here. Can I come in? Is it safe to let her in? No! This girl is a vampire. Anyone in this situation would immediately run inside the house, but vampires can't come in without an invitation. Nikki was checking her house and suddenly noticed that there was someone in the attic. She approached the shadows. It was a father and daughter. Please don't kick us out. Sorry, we snuck in without permission. We've been trying to hide from the vampires. The father said. Is it safe to let them stay? Yes, firstly, they're sitting in the sun, but their skin seems to be okay. Secondly, they managed to enter the house without an invitation. That means they're humans. Nikki let them stay. Let's take a little break. Time for some quick riddles. Think fast. A vampire lived in a one-story black cottage. He had a black cat, a black fish, a black computer, a black armchair, a black desk, and a black phone. Everything was black. What color was the staircase? There was no staircase in that house because it was a one-story cottage. Three vampires are walking fast. The first vampire says, Two other vampires are walking behind me. The second one says, one vampire is walking behind me, and one is walking in front of me. And the third one says, Two vampires are walking in front of me, and two are walking behind me. How is that possible? These vampires are walking in circles. Humans, vampires, and werewolves gathered in one mansion. There are as many werewolves as there are vampires. There are as many vampires as there are humans. How many creatures are there if three of them are werewolves? There are nine creatures in the mansion, three werewolves, three vampires, and three humans. Now let's go back to Nikki and her adventures. Nikki, Peter, and his daughter Becky decided to go to another town together. It takes two days to get there. They drove all day until night fell. Now they have three options. First, they can continue driving until the morning, despite the fact that they may meet a lot of vampires along the way. Second, they can spend the night in the nearest cave with bats. And third, they can sleep in the car. Which option would be the safest for them? Sleeping in the car is a bad idea. Vampires can sneak up on them in the middle of the night. A night in a cave is also a bad option. Vampires can hide among these bats. The safest option is to keep driving. Although they'll probably meet vampires, they have a chance to survive if they drive faster. They drove really fast and managed to reach the city by the morning. But when they got out of the car, they discovered they were surrounded by vampires. To escape, they need to choose one of three roads. On the first road, there's a pack of vampires. They're coming straight at the guys. There are wild hogs on the second road. The third road leads through a dark alley with hundreds of bats. Which of these three ways is the safest? The second way is the best option because the sun illuminates it, so vampires can't follow Nikki and her new friends. Plus, these dogs don't look too unfriendly. The guys reach three stores. Now they need to decide which of the stores is safe to enter. Nikki, Peter, and Becky look through the windows to see what's inside. The first store is empty, but it seems to be full of traps. The second store is full of survivors, but they look dangerous. And the third store seems empty as well, but it's completely dark there, and you can't see anything except for dozens of bats. Where should Nikki lead her friends?
The first store is the safest. If Nikki, Peter, and Becky notice these traps, then the chances are high they'll be able to avoid them. It's worth a try. There's a man in the city who's trying to survive by hiding among vampires. Nikki spent a week photographing vampires to figure out who he was. Will you be able to see who is actually human in these photos? You can see this man has all four photos. In one of the photos, he's eating garlic bread. And in this one, his leg is exposed to the sun. He's only pretending to be a vampire. Nikki and the others decided to invite this man to join their group. The man was delighted and said that his name was Douglas. He was a journalist looking for safe places for people. He suggested creating a password that only humans could figure out. They came up with this one. H-A-W-U-H can you guess why? If you look at the reflection of this word in the mirror, you will see HUAN, or H-U-W-A-N. Flip the letter W and you get the word HUMAN. But only those who get reflected in the mirror will be able to solve this puzzle. Nikki and her friends settle down in this town. Can you guess which of these houses belongs to Nikki? In which Peter and Becky live? And in which Douglas has chosen? House number one belongs to Peter and Becky. There are two bicycles next to it. House number two belongs to the journalist. Do you see his equipment? And the remaining house, house number three, belongs to Nikki. Robert went on a business trip but returned home a day earlier. He found his wife in the bedroom, reading. Do you think she's lying to him? Yes, Robert's wife is overdressed for a reading night. Also, look, there's someone's foot under the bed. Now your task will be to decide which person of the two is in the wrong. Ready? Here's the first one. Quinn and Eliza can't swim. This summer, they both decided to learn how to do it finally. Quinn went to the river near her house. Eliza went to the lake with her friends. They both jumped into the water alone. Who's in greater danger? Quinn, if she starts drowning, no one will be able to help her. Also, the water in the river isn't steady, so it's dangerous to learn there. Chloe and Everly went to go to a party their classmates are throwing, but it's a school night, so their parents banned them from going. Chloe decided to go out of her bedroom window, and Everly wanted to sneak out from the back door. Who won't make it to the party tonight? Everly, most probably. Chloe is acting quite risky, but she might manage the trip. But Everly's mom is right there around the corner, reading. She'll definitely see her daughter trying to sneak out. Hazley and Annabelle plan to go to the movies with their friends tonight. Meanwhile, they're enjoying a hot summer day. Who is not going to make it to the movies? Hazley. She's about to cook the meat that has been standing in the sun for a while. By the evening, she'll probably get food poisoning. Liberty and Cleo went on vacation to Greece. Now they're about to jump off a cliff. Who's in danger? Liberty. There are rocks under the cliff she's about to jump from. Nova made her daughter stay at home and study instead of going to a friend's birthday party. Allison's daughter had to spend the entire day in her bedroom instead of going to the movies. Teenagers come down to dinner at 7 o'clock. Which parent didn't notice they were being lied to? Nova. It's raining and her daughter has wet hair. It means she was outside and not sitting in her bedroom. Beth and Kylie are having fun outside during their winter break. Beth is learning how to skate on the lake, 
and Kylie is skiing in the forest. Who is not smart? Beth. The ice on the lake is cracking, and there's no one around to help her. William and Daniel are driving to work, and they're both running very late. Who's doing something really wrong? Daniel, he's driving way over the speed limit in the neighborhood. All the money from the city bank was taken in the middle of the day without anybody noticing. The room where it was stored was found completely empty, not counting a signature note saying 7718. The police arrested three most known criminals in the city, Bill, Dove, and Alex. The problem was that they didn't know which one was the robber because they didn't find any fingerprints. What's your call, detective? If you turn the paper around, the numbers will turn into a name. Bill. He must be the robber this time. Right before sunset, a peasant boy was caught by the king's palace. The king was very mad and didn't want to let him go just like that. He loved all kinds of riddles, so he gave the boy a chance to escape. He said that the boy could walk out of any of the three doors. And if he stayed safe, he'd be free. Behind the first door, there was a huge pot with water that was boiled just in the morning. Behind the second door, there were three hungry lions. Behind the third door, there was a raging fire. The boy made his choice and managed to leave. Which door did he walk out of? He walked out of the first door. If the water was boiled in the morning, by sunset, it would already be barely warm. Mrs. Quinn, a mother of four, went to work. She left a $50 bill on the kitchen table for her oldest daughter, Katie, to go shopping. Later that day, Katie told her that she couldn't find it. Mrs. Quinn told her to look for it, and Katie asked each one of her siblings. Serena texted, The money was there, but I didn't touch it. Hannah texted, I put it under some plates so that it doesn't fly away. Della texted, There was a pile of yesterday's junk mail. I threw it away. Maybe the money was there. Who took the money? It must have been Della. There was no mail when Mrs. Quinn left the bill on the table, so Della is making things up. Aurora and Autumn were spending their summer in the countryside. They loved to go on long walks and explore the surroundings. One day, they found an abandoned hotel and just walked in. Everything there was crushed, and the glass was shattered. They took some photos and were looking through them at home. One of the photos scared them. Which one and why? Probably this one. Look, there's a mirror, and they're not reflected in it. Amelia and Dakota are sisters. Their grandmother gave Amelia a bracelet, but they both loved it. So, Dakota often steals the bracelet from her. Once, Amelia came home and noticed that the bracelet was gone. She knocked on her sister's door. Dakota opened the door but noticed that it was her sister and shut it. A bit later, Amelia broke into the room and started searching for the bracelet, but she didn't find it anywhere. On her way out, she remembered something and managed to find her bracelet. Where was it? Amelia remembered that when Dakota opened the door, she was wearing a t-shirt. The next time, she was already wearing a long sleeve shirt. She put on the bracelet and was hiding it under the sleeve. That's why Amelia didn't find it in the room. Spencer woke up in a dungeon. She didn't know what had happened, but there was a door. Spencer tried to open it, but it was shut. There were three buttons. On one button, there was a circle. On the second one, there was a triangle. On the third one, there was a rectangle. One button will set her free, and the other two will lock the door forever. There was a note saying, 1, 5, 7, 11. Which button should she press to get out? You might have noticed that there's a clock right above the door, and it's there for a reason. 
If you draw lines connecting 1, 5, 7, and 11, you will get the shape of a rectangle. So Spencer should press the button with a rectangle on it. Lucas, the heir of a rich gentleman, visited his cousin, Kai, for a cup of tea. They were talking about water polo when suddenly Lucas couldn't breathe anymore. Kai called the doctor, who said that Lucas had been poisoned. Both men were drinking the exact same tea. How did Kai manage to poison his cousin? The poison must have been on Lucas's cup. When he touched it with his lips, he probably licked it off. There's a town where it's only allowed to have fun and eat candy. No one ever reads or studies. Mrs. Relum came home after a long and fun day at the club. Her three daughters spent a fun day at home. She asked them what they'd been doing. Hannah said that she was watching TV all day long. Elle said that she spent the day in a water park. Ava said that she and her friends had had a candy-eating marathon. Still, Mrs. Rellin could tell that one of her daughters lied and actually spent all day reading. Who was it? It was Hannah. Take a closer look at the books on her table. Most of them have perfect spines, but this one has a bent spine. So Hannah was reading it. The woman called the police and reported that she'd been robbed. Here's a recording of what she said. I went to the ladies' room to fix my makeup because I was on a date. Suddenly, someone approached me from behind and hit me on the head with something heavy. I blacked out, and it took me several minutes to come. I'm still feeling dizzy. I don't know what the person looked like. I didn't see anything. I was reapplying my lipstick. The police refused to fill in the report and sent her home. Why? If the woman was applying her lipstick, she must have been looking in that huge mirror every bathroom has. No one could have approached her from behind without her noticing it. She probably just lied and made up the whole story. An iced tea cafe owner reported that someone had stolen all the money when he had left for two minutes. The police interrogated three customers. Tatum, a teenager, said that she'd been listening to music and minding her own business. Charles, a middle-aged man, said that he'd just arrived a couple of minutes ago and hadn't seen anything. Skylar, a doctor, said that she had been focusing on her book and her drink and had seen nothing. Who's guilty? Charles said that he'd just arrived, but look, the ice in his drink has melted. He definitely has been there for a while, not just a couple of minutes.